In this episode, we're going to look at a camera cage for the Panasonic GH4, GH3, and Sony A7S, namely the Hanu Fugen, I think that's how you say it, version 2.0. Check this out. With the Fugen Hanu cage, I had four goals for my Panasonic GH4. Number one, protection for the camera. Number two, being able to connect all three of the main pieces that I normally record with, which is a camera, the Atomos recorder, and the audio recorder. And then third, something that would add a little heft so that when I was doing handheld shots, I would get a kind of a smoother action. And then finally, something that would also help retain that HDMI cable that's sticking out the side, something that would really hold on to that and prevent damage to the camera. So this is fantastic build quality. I have no regrets. I really love this cam uh, camera cage. I've been shooting with it for about a month now, and it is really definitely been worth the money. First of all, that HDMI retainer clip works beautifully, as you can see, <laughs> no question. Uh, we definitely added some heft so that there is some advantage in terms of handheld shots here. I'm just standing in place and uh, panning back and forth. And it has smoothed it out. I don't have any image stabilized lenses, so this is kind of a nice additional feature. I don't do this a ton, but nevertheless, there it is. There are cutouts for each of the important doors on the camera. Here, obviously, the battery door. So I do have to take it off the tripod just for my particular tripod. Um, but it's a lot better than having to take the camera out of the whole cage. So not a big deal. That's a quick release for the tripod. And then, of course, the memory card door. I actually found a better way to mount my audio recorder off to the side there, which is a little funky because it's on its side, but I like it that way because the XLR cables come out the bottom that way. And I can still get this memory card. I don't use the memory card a lot because, again, I'm shooting to the Atomos recorder, but I found that I could move that mount, the Tascam recorder, a little farther forward and access that memory card door, no problem. Plenty of mounting points for pretty much anything you need, three quarters, or sorry, three eighths and quarter 20, mostly quarter 20 on both sides, the handle and the top. And then of course, there are also some cold shoe mounts on the diagonals you'll see here. And also where the handle happens to be right now is also another cold shoe. So lots of mounting options and for me works great. Now there is a cutout here for the articulating LCD screen on your camera, which allows you to kind of move it around and get every angle you need. However, if you use the HDMI retaining clip, it does get in the way a little bit. So I don't find that as a showstopper, but it definitely is something to consider there. Also, it does come with these screws up on the front that help prevent the camera from twisting within the cage once you've mounted it there. So that's a nice touch as well. The one thing that's a little bit disconcerting at first is that this is a really tight cage, so it's hard to access some of the controls. But as a filmmaker, really the only controls I need are the white balance and the ISO buttons up on top. I don't really use the dials, so it's just a matter of getting used to reaching around the front to press those two buttons. The one thing about the build quality that I wasn't totally thrilled with, but is not a showstopper, is that the handle does have a little bit of play in it. So it doesn't wobble around when you're not holding on to it. And it doesn't wobble around even when you're holding the cage by it. But it, if you do really kind of bear down, you do get a little play in the movement there. And then finally, these grips on the handle, I thought were permanently attached and would help increase the grip on the handle. But in fact, they come right off. So just something to keep in mind there. Now, if you do do some still photography as well, this is probably not the cage for you. Um, this takes a long time to get everything disconnected so you can get the camera out of the cage. Like for example, you have to loosen those uh, hex screws on the side to get the HDMI cable out. Then you have to take it off the quick release plate. Then you have to unscrew the bottom screw for the cage. And then there are also these thumb screws up on top that help retain the camera. So this is drill trade off, super, super stable for your camera, but it does take some time to get it off. And then finally, if you do shoot with Metabone Speed Booster, which I use to adapt some of my Nikon lenses to use with this camera. You do have to take the little foot on the speed booster off so that it fits onto the cage. It doesn't fit otherwise. Not a big deal. It comes right off. You can put it back on later if you need it to, but uh, just something to keep in mind. So there you have it. I know I'm going to get a question. Do you recommend it? I recommended it for me, and I still recommend it for me. I think it's a good fit for the type of shooting that I do. Over time, I'm becoming more and more convinced there's no such thing as a perfect gear. However, there is gear that works well for you or doesn't work well for you. But I, I can't really say this is the ultimate cage. Um, I think for the price, it's a really good deal. Are there issues with it? Yeah, I think the handle's a little bit of an issue. For me, not a huge showstopper because I don't rely on that handle to stabilize my shots. It's really kind of a utility type thing for me when I'm taking the camera off of the tripod or something like that. So um, I hope that's helpful for you. I hope that uh, the things that we talked about will help you decide, well, that's going to fit my style or not. 
And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon. Thank you.